So today, we're going to show you how we turn plastic pellets into plastic parts for our underwater jetpacks. So all the plastic for the injection molding starts off as these little pellets. This gets melted down and squirted into a big metal tool where the plastic is formed. And we're going to take a look at that now. We're in the tool room now where some of the smaller molding tool inserts are finished. This is pre-molding phase where the injection mold tool itself is in production. I'm here with Phil today from RP Technologies. He's taken my project on from the start to make the plastic for the underwater jetpacks. Thank you, Phil. No problem. So we're standing here in the CNC section of the factory. Uh, CNC machines. CNC stands for Computer Numerically Controlled, for those that don't know. So basically, we take artist products. It's read into the system. We produce the cutter paths. We machine the aluminium to make, to make the mold tool. It's all done on these machines beauty of which we can leave running lights out so production times can be brought down when necessary. That's brilliant. So one of the main reasons I came here to RP is they've got from the tool shop all the way to the moulding everything in-house. So the accountability between the, the, the sections is there and I can walk from one place to the other and see the whole process and for me that's something that's extremely important. So we stood here in front of our largest press. This is a 600 tonne Bosch press. We have 11 presses on site, ranging from this one down to a 60 tonne for very small parts. We can move very, very quickly when, when we need to, as we did with your project. Absolutely, yeah. So this is where the plastic pellets we saw earlier are brought in, they're dried, and they're fed through up into that hopper before they're injected into the mold tool. You can see the machined aluminium mold tool closing in the press now. In their quality engineering department now. This is one of the parts you haven't seen yet and it matches up with the top that we were looking at earlier. It's on the inspection machine at the moment because it's quite complicated and it's got to tie the whole jetpack together whilst directing the thrust out the back of the unit. Kenny here is going to talk us a little bit about the CMM machine and how we measure the tolerance of the injection molding part. Okay so this is the CMM and it's accurate to plus or minus three microns. As you see we've got the part on the table here and we've got the model loaded and what we've done is a series of points to match the model to the part, set a profile tolerance of plus or minus 0.3, and then measured points evenly across the space of the part, and this is the output on the screen here. So one of the things that's really impressive about this is that we're only out by plus or minus at one third of a millimetre over the entire part. Now that's at the peaks, and in a lot of areas, we're actually only 0.2, when a lot of places only 0.1 millimetre out. And for something like this, which is extra complicated, uh, that's very impressive. So there you have it. That's how the first stage of the Cuda Jet Underwater Jetpack Top Shell is created with injection molding here in England. Now we need to give it its silver iconic finish you would all recognize. Thanks to RP Technologies today for having us down and walking us through their facility. Keep an eye out for future episodes of Made in England for further insight into how we created the world's first underwater jetpack. The deal.